The Rangers won, baby. We beat the number one power ranked Tampa Bay Lightning. That's right. Your New York Rangers, who still kind of suck ass, just beat the best team in hockey right now. Boom. So let's talk about the game as a whole. It's different. You know, you think you beat Las Vegas the way we did, 6-4. You did it against a fourth string goal, so you're kind of like, eh. You take it with a grain of salt, like, eh, it wasn't that great. But then you go ahead and you beat a healthy, a healthy Tampa Bay Lightning team. Shut out Kucherov. Shut out Stamkos, the two leadingest goal scorers in the NHL. I mean, bro, bro, good shit. Good shit. Um, now, right, take a look at the individual stats of this game. Once I just tie this, okay. Now that will stop falling. Okay. So, uh, in terms of giveaways, we had more giveaways. However, the number is, again, on a downward trend. We only had 10 giveaways this game, although... If you were watching this game, you'd think we had a lot more than 10. It looked bad. 10 Bay only had 7 giveaways. If we can get in the single digits, we'd be money. Uh, we had 15 blocks, 18 hits, but but, but, but 16 penalty minutes. However, 10 Bay only had 2 power plays. Uh, I believe it was a bunch of fights tonight. I had to look at the scorecard. Uh, honestly, I don't even know how some of those were considered fights. Like that Camphor Brown fight in the third period. What the fuck was that? Um, Chris Kreider scored again. I mean, listen, I know... It was a beautiful feed by uh, Zibanejad again, by the way. And I know Kreider's getting these tap-in goals, goals, but that's the kind of goals you'd expect from a guy like Chris Kreider. Like, he's got a good shot. He's got good size. He could drive the net a little more often. But if he's scoring, he's scoring. A goal is a goal, nonetheless. If he scores 40 goals like that, that's 40 freaking goals. And, and you know what? Listen, he was a, he's in perfect position when he's getting these little tap-in goals. So honestly, I don't freaking mind it. Great, great play. Uh, getting the puck up like that. We had the majority of the faceoff win, 54%. Should be in our favor. And we outshot them 35-28. All right. That Miller goal in overtime, you got to watch my reaction in the video I just posted before. I would have gotten so much more loud and crazy. And honestly, I've been so lackluster and like making jokes and whatnot and like having fun during watching the Rangers overtime because we were on such a shit schedule down here in Carolina. Like, listen, I, I love North Carolina. I really do. I like it down here. But my siblings are, my, my sister's in elementary school. She's getting up at like 5.30 in the morning to get ready for school. My brother gets up at 6.30 to go to school. And he's in middle school. So like, we have to be so quiet on a weeknight. You know, because we don't want to screw up their sleep schedule. We don't want them to wake up in a pissy mood the next morning. It, it's, it's, it's crazy. So I, I, I wish I could go a little more crazy for the overtime videos. But unfortunately, I can't. Although tonight I got, a, we, I mean, we got excited. Uh, besides that, besides that, um, Buknevich finally got some ice time in overtime. I mean, he didn't do much, but ice time is ice time. IMO. Uh, alright, so, uh, Kreider and Miller with the goals. Oh, God, I keep going. Sabanajad, uh, Shaddy and Shea with assists. I believe Shaddy now has 11 points in the season. He's doing really well. Um, take a look at ice time. For the Rangers, where are we? Okay. So, again, we go back to the whole dressing Stephen Camper thing and sitting Brendan Smith. I don't know if sitting Brendan Smith was the best choice for this game. Uh, I mean, maybe they just wanted more righties in the lineup uh, with Camper. Because if you would have sat Camper and played uh, Smith, we have, you have five lefties and one righty. But what's the point in dressing Camper? If he's only going to play 14 and a half minutes. Which is lower than almost the majority of the forwards for the Rangers. Uh, he The only players with less ice time than him was DeHarnay. Uh, Grabner by 20 seconds. VC, Nieves, Faust, and Miller. So just a handful of forwards. That's it. Buknevich had more ice time than him. That is saying something. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know, man. I thought we could have done a little bit better with, uh, with the defensive rotations and whatnot. I mean, he's playing well, I suppose. But you could tell sometimes where he really is, like, a minor league or seventh defenseman. I don't really see him as an NHL stalwart. You know, he's not that guy. On a bad team, maybe, but I, I think we have a pretty 
deep defensive core. Uh, for some reason, Brady Shea, the only two defensemen that logged over seven seconds of ice time on the power play were Shea, uh, Shatt and, Shattenkirk and McDonough. Shea played, had six seconds of power play ice time. I don't know why they have such a hard-on, or Vigneault has such a hard-on for having McDonough on the power play. I think McDonough is a great offensive player and all, who only had one giveaway today. Uh, I think Brady Shea is more suited for the power play going forward. At least, you know, we haven't been firing on all cylinders. Which was the status quo for a while. I don't see the harm in giving Brady Shea more uh, power play ice time. And maybe cutting down on DeHarnay, who logged 2 minutes, 7 seconds of power play ice time today. I don't think DeHarnay is playing bad. I just think there's players that are more deserving. But yeah, listen, good game. Hank made 27 saves. We looked good. Look good. I'm not going to comment on anything else. Comment down below. I'll respond to everything. I got to go to bed. I'm exhausted. And I'll see you guys later. Good win. Peace.